In this video, I'm gonna be going over all these shortcuts, hotkeys, and just tricks that I use in VS Code on pretty much a daily basis. Now, this is a mix of things that I have learned over the years, and then also people have recommended to me that I've basically brought on and use all the time now. And it doesn't require you to install any special extensions. These are all just built into VS Code itself. The other thing that I wanted to mention is throughout this video, I'm going to be using the screencaster mode in VS Code, which means whatever keys that I type on my keyboard, you'll see on my screen. So here I just press the letter K and you saw it pop up. So as I'm doing these hotkeys or shortcuts, you're going to see the keys pop up there. And I thought we'd start off with the command palette, which is actually how I turned on the screencast mode. So if you can't command shift P that opens up this little modal here and I want to mention I'm on a Mac so it's going to be command for me but you can pretty much just replace command with control in your head whenever I say it if you're on a Windows computer so it brings up this little window and you'll notice here I have this little developer menu toggled on for the screencast mode and as you type you get auto completion and it up there and you'll notice that there's this little arrow here at the top this is basically allows you to have this menu do two things. If you have the arrow there, you have these commands that you can run. Uh, otherwise, you can navigate files with it. Uh, and I can open command P will open up this window without the arrow there. And I can just add an arrow to switch to this. So it's like two different modes that you can do with this command palette. You can either switch files with it or basically turn options on and off. And you'll see this there's basically two options that I use the most, which you'll see right here, because it's sorted by frequency. I use reload window, which just reloads VS Code, and just restarting the TypeScript server the most. But occasionally, I'll do things like organize my imports or format the document, which we're going to talk about more uh, in a little bit. Um, but the other thing is, this is pretty much the main way that I navigate files. So here you basically can just type... Uh, words and then it'll navigate to basically a fuzzy find of that so for example if I want to go to the routes folder I can start typing routes and it's gonna match whatever keys I've typed and then I just go to the one I want I want this one and I hit enter and now I've navigated to that file uh, so pretty much especially in big workspaces this is the main way I navigate through file systems is just typing the file I want and going directly to it all right the next thing that I wanted to do uh, is go over snippets. So if you go to code, preferences, or settings, and then just go to user snippets. So we see this little menu. You could probably open it through the uh, command shift. You could do that as well. Insert snippets or this. Uh, so here you'll see you can pick the language that you want. You can also looks like do global snippets or a new snippet file. Uh, for just a particular workspace. I tend to do it just based off of the language. So I've usually been working with TypeScript lately. So if we jump into my TypeScript React, you'll notice there's a JSON file here and we can actually put in code snippets. Uh, and then we basically give it a prefix. So for example, here uh, I held it RPC. And then whenever I type RPC, uh, it's gonna allow me to basically replace that text with what I have here. It's gonna replace it with this snippet. And you can also do these things like dollar sign one. These are special things in VS Code snippets that allow your cursor to jump there. So an example of this, if I say RPC here, you'll see we have this Re TypeScript React pure component. This is what I named it. And if I hit enter, it's gonna fill in the snippet. And you'll notice my cursor went to the first dollar sign. And I can say hello. And then if I hit tab, it's gonna take me to the other dollar sign two over here. Um, so you'll notice my cursor started there, then jumped there. So you can control, and I'm sure there's probably some other stuff that you can do. Here's, they have some stuff when you open uh, the snippets that tells you exactly how to use them. But then you can then save yourself some time uh, typing stuff. Here's another snippet that I commonly use. All right, next thing is commenting things out. So I'll commonly just select a block of code um, and then comment it out. So if you do command slash, uh, it'll comment it out and you can also uncomment that way as well so that's pretty handy and then renaming things so let's say i want to rename everything in this file for styles for example i could just do a control or command f and open up the find and replace uh, but vs code also has a refactor i use the f2 is the key binding for me and then i just rename it to what i want so styles2 hit enter and it's going to rename it in this file it's also good to note that this uh, replaces all the, the where this is referenced and also does it across files. 
So for example, this particular component is used across other files. So if I rename it, uh, we'll notice it renamed it in the routes over here to current workout two for us automatically and also replaces like imports and stuff. So that I use for refactoring and renaming things. Uh, and then I will commonly need to type stuff in the VS Code terminal. Uh, let me save this real quick. And so I'll be opening that up with control tilde. So I toggle that on and off. That's a common thing that I do. Next thing is creating a, a deeply nested file. So for example, let's say I wanna create a new folder here called uh, Bob. And then inside of Bob, I wanna create an index.js or .ts. Uh, if I can do that in one blow, instead of saying right click new file, new, uh, new folder, new file, I can just say bob2 slash index2.ts and that will create the file and the folder at the same time. Now you'll notice it didn't show up here. Sometimes when you do this, you have to come up to the little refresh, just refresh it. Uh, it is there, just VS Code doesn't always re recognize it. All right, so now you can see we created that in one blow. So that's something I'll commonly do. And then here, this is another thing. This is not really a tip, but I'm just gonna control shift where I'm just saying shift and clicking both of these and then you can delete them at the same time. All right, anyway, next one is uh, the go-to definition. So if we hover over uh, pretty much anything, so for example, this particular function, uh, I can right click it and there's these different options that I can use here. So this first one is go to definition. And now this does two different things depending on the language you're using and also whether the particular file is uh, or function or variable is something you wrote or you got from a library. So if we say go to definition, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take us to the type declaration if we're in TypeScript and um, we can see what it is. Uh, so the other ones that are also pretty helpful is we can peek it. So it doesn't actually take us to the file itself, but we can just view it. Using TypeScript, this is pretty helpful for me because I can just kind of see what's going on with the file uh, and how I might reference it. I can see what variables and whatnot it takes and the types. Um, and then we can also go to type definition, which in this case, I guess it does the exact same thing. Um, and then find references I use as well. Uh, this is where you can see where it's being used in the project or like this is more of a use case I would use is I've created this variable called root store, see where it's being used. Um, and we can see it here, or we can see it in a little peak menu if you want to as well. Now that you can like directly, uh, so we saw this go to definition on a, this is a library function, but we can also do this for things we declared. And this is actually commonly how I navigate. So for example, I wanna see the definition of this. I can right click, go to definition and see where this was created in my code. Now, I don't usually right click and go to definition. Instead, what I do is hold command and you'll notice now things are links and I can actually just click on them. So everything is a link now. And if I click on it, it'll actually just take me to that. And so I'll, what I'll commonly do is navigate there because it's very quick to just jump through these files here. So I can go, all right, I want the root store context. And then you know what? I want to see where I made this timer. Click on that, takes me to the definition of that. Then I want to see where I made this other thing. You know, I have this pad zero function that I used here. Let's see where that's at, you know. And so that I'll just kind of dive through my code that way, uh, finding things. So between that and then command P, uh, this little menu is the main ways I'll navigate as long with the, of course, just clicking files on the side. Next thing is organizing imports. So this is something where uh, I have like my imports all mixed up like this. If I hit save, um, you'll notice my imports all get nicely saved. It also will uh, make sure if I have any things that are uh, unused. So for example, I'm no longer using the style sheet. Now uh, we can see it, if I save it, it got rid of it. Um, so that's pretty nice. I wanna do that. Uh, and the way you turn that on is if we go into preferences settings, uh, we hit this little, this little guy up there to see the JSON settings. I have mine on where we have, uh, I set an editor code action on save. So every time I save the file, it's gonna call organize imports. Now, if instead you don't want this to happen every time you save, if you do our handy dandy menu, command shift P, and we say organize imports, that is where we can get things to import. And of course, we can also run format document, which we said earlier. Uh, and then the last two things I wanna go over, these are probably the things that I use the most is the autocomplete menu and the quick fix menu. 
All right, so like for example, when I'm typing, I wanna say react dot, and we can see all the different things that we have access to that we can call from react. And then now depending on the language you're using, you may see more or less stuff here, but sometimes this menu does not show up for whatever reason. Um, and so what you can do is hover over the end of the word or whatever you wanna type and hit control space, and that'll bring up that menu for you. So that's an important one. The other thing I would mention is sometimes you'll get like a little context over here. So uh, if we say pure component, uh, it's not showing up anything right now. Maybe if I press that, yeah, there we go. Uh, you can see there's sometimes some context of more about what it is or the definition for it. We can also do this for other things. So like, I don't know, my workout context. I actually I didn't create a workout context. I can see my workout history stores, but you'll notice also, this is a good thing uh, to know as well as these icons on the sides are meaningful. And I'll, I can see where this would auto import. So that's the other thing. It doesn't only auto complete the word, it'll also import it as well if you were to hit enter. And you can see where it's being imported from. So I can see this particular thing is a variable that looks like it's inside, we've already imported or it's right here so it doesn't need to be imported. Uh, if I hit arrow key, I can look at this one. I can see if I were to uh, like hit enter right now, it would import from this location. So control space, open back up. Um, so if I were to hit enter, we go back up to the top, we're gonna see this import added for us. So that's pretty handy. The other way we can add imports and just in general see some uh, changes is let's say we don't have this uh, there. We can like hover over this. We can see cannot find uh, the name or whatever, right? And we want to import this. So we one option is again for us to go to the end of the thing and hit control space and we can see that. So that's one option. We also notice there's a little light bulb here. This is called the quick fix menu. If I click on this, you'll notice it gives me an option to click on that. But again, you'll notice I'm a keyboard guy. So we can also toggle that menu. I usually do it when I'm at, like have my cursor at the end of the word. Uh, like right there and then I say command period but I also think it works probably anywhere inside of the word too and you'll notice we saw that little menu pop up with the uh, import there so now I can just hit enter and it'll import that for us and sometimes it has other fixes as well in your code uh, that you can do anyway that is just some of the hot fixes or sorry not hot fixes hot keys that I use and pretty much uh, all the time really when I'm coding if you've watched any of my videos you've probably seen me use some of them uh, but if you have any also suggestions for me of things you think I might like please let me know because I'm always trying to improve uh, the hotkeys that I'm using because I actually am just love adding them uh, and start using them anyway hope that was helpful